to be very frank, at the very beginning, I was much concerned that we wouldn't be able to reach an agreement, given the diversity of views among stakeholders about the, uh, the final outcome of the negotiation. Fortnightly, I was wrong. In a previous incarnation, I was on the side of management. I was a vice president. When management uh, took the responsibility of uh, proposing, writing down uh, what at the time was called strategic directions. Uh, uh, with president Bob Zelik, uh, I was uh, one of his VPs. And uh, the drafting on the side of management uh, was made by my front office. Someone in my front office was the task leader. And uh, it didn't work as well as it was the case with the forward look. Because given the strategic uh, mission uh, akin to the board's function, I think it was more appropriate for such a kind of strategic discussion to be led by the board, as it was the case most recently. So I think, uh, by comparison, the outcome of the forward look were, was owned by the stakeholders uh, key uh, in the process of uh, definition of the capital increase. So I think, I think the forward look w had the, the, the appropriate foundations for such a case. And this is a, a lesson to to be maintained, I believe, in future exercises of this nature. Fundamental, because one of the major takeaways of this whole discussion uh, along the process was exactly the idea of uh, uh, making the maximization of finance for development a key uh, base of the work, of the contribution of the World Bank Group uh, in the future. That is to say, using the scarce resources available through the World Bank Group to crowd in to the most possible the participation of other uh, agents in our projects in, in, in the, in the, through the policies that we support. And that maximizing finance for development would not be possible uh, if IFC were to be left behind without being empowered financially to do its part in the whole package. We have to have uh, policies uh, being advised by the IBRD side uh, uh, and also the corresponding side on, on the IDA uh, business uh, on what to do in terms of policies to the countries so as to make sure that down the road each buck of money that we put through IDA or through IBRD or, or IFC makes possible the uh, attraction, the crowding in of much more money from private sources or other sources. So, uh, without IFC on the same track, simply the whole exercise would fail. It went very gradually, and then at a certain crit critical moment, uh, there was a fast convergence, and I explained. Uh, which is the same reason behind my initial uh, skepticism on, on, on the, the uh, success of getting a, a significant package. Uh, we started this process with a, a, a divergence of views about the, the future of the World Bank Group among at least four major groups of stakeholders. There was a small but powerful subgroup of shareholders who, let's say, preferred to have an evolution towards uh, making the IBRD or the World Bank Group increasingly a big IDA agency. Uh, the, the ways by which this vision 
was expressed came out in the agenda in the requirements for, uh, for scrapping out uh, allocations to upper middle income countries, some others uh, talking about uh, simply very high skyrocketing prices of lending and so on. But they, there was uh, direct declarations by, by, for instance, some U.S. authorities about the need to shut the window for some upper middle income countries and so on. But you had another group of powerful stakeholders, part one countries, who insisted on keeping the umbrella very much open uh, because of the need to engage the whole spectrum of countries in global public goods. Then there was a third cohort, comprised mostly by uh, upper middle income countries, who insisted that they should have the option on how to be client to the World Bank Group, uh, meaning not only through very narrow forms of technical assistance, but also uh, being able to tap on lending source. And then you had another group of uh, countries, uh, lower middle income countries and countries aspiring to, to be there, which wanted the guarantees of lending space in the smalling in the, in, the, in the shrinking pie. Uh, so this led uh, uh, evidently to different components of the package considered to be, let's say, untouchable by each one of these four ports. And, and, and so progress along the discussion seemed to be uh, were very slow because of the difficulty to find a compromise. But then when it became clear that it was all or nothing, uh, each one of those buckets of interest ended up compromising and reaching a, a common ground. So slow and suddenly fast. I would say that the components of the final compromise uh, came out gradually at each, each one of those steps of the discussion. Uh, namely, the compromise was, uh, at the end of the day, that those part one countries who, let's say, vied for moving faster the World Bank group to become a big IDA, that the, the, the velocity of that transition would not necessarily have to be uh, very drastic. Also, uh, there was, uh, you know, the perception by upper middle income countries that one of the price to be paid for keeping the, uh, the, the World Bank Group as a source of lending would be to pay higher price uh, and to accept uh, uh, caps uh, uh, of an organized uh, path of, uh, of uh, uh, reducing the share of resources taken by upper middle income countries. And as well, in, on the, in the case of, uh, of uh, the aspiring to be major clients, the lower middle income countries, there was also the perception that uh, there would have to be a, a market reservation for uh, the upper middle income countries for the whole thing uh, to work out. Now, these com those components of the final package, they became possibilities as we went through the discussion of the several components, including not only on the IBRD side, but also on the IFC side. The art of compromise had to be exercised because the constituency that I was representing at the time comprised uh, upper middle income countries like Brazil, very close to be upper middle income countries. Uh, you had major clients like Colombia. We, the constituency has and had at the time lower middle income country, lower uh, uh, like the Philippines, who naturally was sympathetic to the idea of, uh, of uh, uh, guarantees of lending space for them. 
And we also had Haiti in either country. Uh, so it was a process through which consultation, transparency, uh, conversation of my office, particularly in my case as the, 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 the executive director, with the authorities of these countries, with my governors, made clear to them how no perfect unilateral package uh, from the standpoint of any one of them would be possible, that some compromise had to be found. And that gave me the assurance uh, as, a, as a representative uh, along the, the, the preliminary negotiations to walk with the, 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 uh, the commitment to getting a compromise. Talk, transparency, explanation, and perception that at the end of the day, in order for a deal to be obtained, one cannot aspire to have to have it all. To be very honest, uh, when we got to to that meeting, uh, my early skepticism had waned a bit because uh, it was possible to foresee uh, a set of commitments uh, that might make the ground for uh, a compromise. On the other hand, one stakeholder, uh, at least one major stakeholder, came to the, 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 the meeting at the time of that meeting, of that retreat, uh, still hanging on a very drastic idea of, uh, of uh, uh, cutting out the window for further lending to uh, most upper middle income countries. So I truly believe that when the representative of this shareholder came to the meeting and gave signals that that position might be also subject to the compromise. And also, that was one major uh, change uh, that made possible the whole thing, particularly because those more, let's say, resistant to keeping the window open to upper middle income countries managed to converge toward a, a, a single agenda of items. I would highlight this, and I will also would highlight the role played by upper middle income countries in accepting not only the idea of, uh, of caps over time, but also paying a higher price. I guess this made possible reaching a deal. And that all only became clear uh, during that retreat. It was a great experience to see how compromise can be reached when uh, most parts really want to have it. It has been a progress, and there is some way to go. If you want uh, use as a benchmark exactly what the agreed formula for shareholding uh, says. So we are not there yet uh, when it comes to, let's say, having the multilateral nature of the World Bank Group uh, being reflected in, in, in the shares and the, the weights by, uh, according to the criteria of, for countries, according to the criteria, set out in the agreed formula. Uh, having said that, uh, it's extremely important that we manage to get that capital increase because we do need a World Bank group strong and able to play the game out there. I truly believe that we live in a context nowadays in which there is a risk of fragmentation of uh, institutions, uh, not only multilateral, but also 
well, particularly plurilateral institutions. Uh, since we, for several reasons, uh, perception by some uh, countries that the space for changing the structure uh, in the Bretton Woods institution is, is very little, is very limited. So other institutions have been created. There has also been an increase of capital of uh, other regional institutions and so on. And we do have a, a propensity or a possibility of fragmentation in, in, in development uh, support by, by institutions uh, out there. And so far, so good in the sense that cooperation has prevailed. I myself had the experience of, uh, of uh, watching this taking place in joint support by the World Bank Group and, and the Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank in a specific project in, 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 in Manila. Uh, there are some other examples as, as well taking place between uh, the, the, uh, the New Development Bank and, and other regional development institutions. So cooperation has prevailed and with harmonization of, uh, of, uh, of, uh, of standards, as it was the case in the project in, the, in Manila. But uh, there is always looming over there the risk of having inconsistency among uh, safeguards of these institutions, among uh, uh, duplication of efforts, and, and uh, an outcome that is suboptimal as compared to uh, the, the, what happens when there is ground for cooperation, when there is an effort of cooperation among these institutions. That's a reality. Uh, the World Bank Group and the regional government banks are no longer the only kids in the block, and we have to live with that. Now, it is important that uh, an institution, the key institution in this regard, which is the World Bank Group, is equipped enough to play the game, to, to, to also uh, offer uh, attractiveness as a partner in this endeavor. So I repute as uh, 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 an important success and I hopefully to be succeeded by uh, other similar movements in the future when, when push comes to shove, among other reasons because now we live in a world that has some potential of fragmentation and suboptimal results. Compromise, compromise, compromise.